Episode 56 done and done. We uh, checked out Banksy this week at the Toronto Bloor warehouse thingy. Mm-hmm. A little surprise twist. Very cool stuff. Yep. Um, we also uh, dissected Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil book. Yeah, not the game, the book. Yeah, yeah that's what, I was wondering if that's where the name of the, uh, maybe the game not, came from. Uh, maybe. maybe he was a big Nietzsche fan. Could be. Uh, then we talked about the people of the book. Isa and a philosophical question that I didn't ask this week. Actually, Vish asked me, and we we're like, let's save it for the podcast. Sure. Yeah. So, oh, do you like the tunes? This is all of our old, old stuff. We thought we'd use some license-free, <laughs> license, <laughs> ultra true. license-free by creating it. Yes. Yeah. Um, Merchandise. Yeah. Shop. Shop. Pick cool. up some teas on Teespring. Um, what else? Oh, support us on Patreon. Like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, video reply back. All that good stuff. Tag us in photos. Watch our um, PlayStation reactions. Yeah, that was a cool one. Yep. And we also got uh, Walkthrough. More Walkthroughs. GTA 5 yep. coming at you. All right. Here we go. Two. Three, two, one. Shazam. And I am Alakazam. Trying out new intros. Okay. Three, two, one. Shazam. Um, so we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This is episode 56. Yeah. 5, 6. Yep. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is that standard podcast mm-hmm. where we do the weekly roundup. We talk about five things from the week that we thought were pretty cool. And, um, you yeah, know, we just talk about them. Five topics. Feel free to send in your topics if you'd like. But if we don't, sure. if we've never heard of those, then we're not going to talk about them. Mm-hmm. That's true. That, that's what will happen. So, uh, first on the docket, we just got back from the Banksy exhibit in Toronto. Yeah. What do you think? I did. Banksy. I mean, it's cool to see because I don't, I haven't seen all of his stuff. Yeah, I don't think that was like, that was like photos of his work and stuff. Yeah. So like that's I was, what I. That's what I assume because the, he does it on walls. It's like graffiti. How are you gonna? That off a wall. That's true. Yeah, I was so confused. I thought it was gonna. <coughs> excuse me. I thought that was gonna be one of those like um, one of his like art piece exhibits where you know, the whole the whole show was like a satirical play on something, but it really mm-hmm. wasn't like that. It was like it was like an actual art gallery of like ph- photographs of his work, and then there was only one original piece there that was taken uh, directly off of the metal canvas or whatever, like that he spray painted. It on. Some yeah, it was like a metal. Windowsill or like something like that. It's some like a garage uh, thing. Yeah, garage thing. Like, like like you open it, whatever. Yeah. So there's a one original piece there. Everything else was just photos, and then there's like LCD screens with the artist talking. And prints. Yeah, I'm gonna put it up on um, at c dot spook. That's my travel slash photography okay. Instagram. So if you want to check out the behind the scenes, it's all there. Not okay, now. Cool. Well, by the time you listen to this, it'll be up. So. All right. Uh yeah, I was yeah. You said you had something to tell me about this one uh, you're like I'll, I'll well yeah I was gonna say like well it's all not affiliated with actual Banksy alright so that hurt my feelings so, I didn't it's like, a good thing I heard something like about that <laughs> like Tara was saying like oh it's not with Banksy I'm like wait what and she's like oh actually wait wait Vish said he wanted to save that to tell you oh. I was like oh okay alright <laughs> she broke so I kind of I kind of fault like no she, I think she like forgot yeah yeah, yeah. and then um, and then I felt really bad I was like no but then I, I kind of forgot about it because I'm like oh Vish will tell me yeah on the podcast. Well, one thing was that, yeah, that they, it's not, he's not affiliated with them anymore. Like, mm-hmm. And we found that out. Cause even like, he said it too in, at the end of, I, like the last, a, the last exhibit is like yeah. when they broke up and you're like, oh. That's part of the exhibit, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they go through different time er, periods. Time periods. Like 1993, of his, 2004. Of his, yeah, yeah. I really loved Exit Through the Gift Shop. I didn't know it was nominated for an Oscar. Or I don't remember. Oscar? Yeah, I think it was like an Oscar or something like that. For a documentary, I guess? Yeah. That's one I would buy. I watched it a long time ago. Uh, okay. And it was so good. Mm-hmm. It's it's what got me into like... It, it made me realize like, oh, why do I have to do things for other people? If you want to create art, just create art for the sake of creating art. Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't need somebody to tell okay. you like, oh, you can create art now. You just do it like he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. That's why I like social media too, because like you get a platform to like exhibit your art mm-hmm. instead of doing like a 
like uh, street art. Like before there was, um, before there was like social media and stuff. Yeah, I guess the only way to like get recognition was to like do street art. You know. I guess so, to get yeah. it out there. On I mean, the free, the, that you know? time too was like going into the the wars and stuff. So yeah, so it's like very politically driven yeah. uh, art pieces. Yeah, I think I did something like that before. Like uh, I can't remember. It's a while back. I did. I definitely did some like print out graffitis. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, some influence from him. Yeah, some yeah. influence. If you I watch the good. actually, I remember this. If you scroll down to the very first post I have on uh, my Instagram account. I cleared it up, obviously. Like you gotta like curate your own stuff. Yeah. But um, the first post I ever made, well, the first post on Instagram at the moment is um, uh, positivity graffiti that I did. Like printed it out on <laughs> um, like printer paper, and then I I like taped it. Yeah. On a post. pole, it's still yeah. out there. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> um, but yeah, there's that, <clears throat> and then but I got the influence from the Bob Marley documentary. Remember that? Oh yeah, he's talking about like yeah. just spread like peace and stuff, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's true. Like you could just spread your message. Uh, the other thing was uh, earlier in the week, someone stole one of those things from the one here in Toronto. Stole what? A uh, picture or whatever, like from the wall. No. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's funny because they were just saying that in in uh, Banksy's other. Uh, exhibit maybe, some somebody maybe stole it himself. I don't know. Oh really? Take his own work. Back. He like flew all the way to um, Toronto <laughs> to steal his work. <laughs> well, well, what was the piece? Uh, shopping carts. Yeah, yeah, that one. I think it was that one. Oh wow! How did you do that? That's pretty I don't good. Know. He just grabbed it and, and just walked out. Ran with it. Yeah. He ran. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. That. Of course, he would run, right? Maybe you, unless it's kind of weird. I don't know how they got how unless got like through the obedience it. to authority. He just looked like a worker. Could have been. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, that's possible. It's kind of funny because I think that's how Banksy did a lot of his own graffiti, where he just mm. made himself look like a worker, and nobody would say anything. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Because like, oh, he's just working. Right, right, right. Uh, one interesting thing that I found was that that big um, uh, protest here or whatever, riot here, riot zone, something like that. Uh-huh. It was in the middle of like. Um, London and they're saying he was saying like when you listen to audio he put uh, fake graffiti like washable graffiti oh paint, yeah 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 on just the... in case he got caught so then like he could just wash it off and there'd be no evidence so he can't get charged with the crime because there's no vandalism yeah the, the one where yeah the protest one right yeah, yeah protest protest here or yeah, something, something like or, yeah. and then um, yeah that was washable but then he yeah, ended up getting one. caught and then the guy just let him go he's like I oh, just, just don't do it <laughs> yeah. oh, like he yeah. put it up and then he got caught yeah there was like uh, I like the one some people had caught captured him doing one of those prints. Oh, okay. On the wall. Did you see those like there's like three of those images? Oh no, I think that was the photographer took that. Or the I guess so, but it was like, and he's like faces showing. Blurred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think the photographer was. I like, wasn't really paying attention. Oh yeah, okay. like the whole the whole um, thing is those photos were the photos taken by the the curator mm. who worked with Banksy. So right. Like, he yeah, was, yeah, like, yeah. They I'm, worked he together. Was, like, yeah. Taking. Like, you know, documentary style shots. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Then, uh, something happened between those two, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Although he says it's, it was a mutual breakup. But my my favorite piece, I'd have to say, is... Well, there's two. The the Destroy Capitalism t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, but they're buying the shirts. Um, and uh, the other one was... the they're, they're hunting for the shopping cart. The okay. two natives, yeah, and then they're like, they're like throwing uh, spears at a shopping cart. It's kind of funny. And then I love that last quote as you're leaving. It's like, oh, we need to. That was the one change that was capitalism. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like the last quote. The last quote when you're like leaving the exhibit and you're going to the gift shop. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's funny. Exit through the gift shop too. It's <laughs> yeah. like, uh, it's just like his doc name. But um, it said like, um. That we gotta bring down capitalism. Yeah. But for now, let's just relax our minds and shop. And it was like that's hilarious because it's like you don't realize that you're poking fun at. You know, it's it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's a very like Zenish. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, you right, know, right, right. Kind of right. like saying. One would even say Nietzschean saying. Okay. <laughs> which is a great segue into our next topic. Yeah, sure. Anything else about Banksy? No, that was it. Yeah, I like Banksy a lot big influence 
I, I just really like how it's like you just do it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's like, you don't need anyone's permission to make great art. Right. And people that make your art expensive and say that's great, well, art's Wait, wait, what did he say? Free. You don't need... Like, no, no, he didn't directly say that. I'm saying, like, through his influence, I got that you don't need... Like, you can just do anything to make your own great art. Like, yeah. was a spray paint art cost $10? Spray yeah, cans. like the spray cans, so anyone can be an artist. Yeah, yeah for like ten dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, just just do it. Yeah, and that's that's why it's also cool because he's anonymous. Like, well, well, there's a lot of people that do do it, right? I know. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. But they don't yeah. get known. Though. And it's cool because because he's anonymous. It's an ideal, you know. It's like a Batman. A man can be broken, but an idea never fades. Mm-hmm. Like from Dark Knight movie. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Brings to our next topic on Beyond Good and Evil, Nietzsche's one of Nietzsche's most famous books. Then there's also Thus Said Zarathustra. I didn't read that one yet, but I did read Beyond Good and Evil. And um, what I thought was interesting is that a lot of these conclusions can be drawn upon if you're not afraid to just like examine your own psyche yeah. without having a preconceived notion. Mm-hmm. So like. Uh, it, it's hard to explain but it's like it's like when they say like oh you should come to it through meditation because like in meditation there is no mind so there's no preconceived notions it's basically what they're trying to say right. but then you get like all the crazy spiritualism where it's like oh yeah we gotta come to it with no mind it's like no what he's trying to say what, he's, what they're really trying to say is like you have to observe something without judgment yeah. it's very hard to do because we're full of judgment mm. you know like how do you like it's almost paradoxical how do you come to something without judgment if you yourself are full of judgment yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. So that's why it's, it's a very difficult thing to do but um, Nietzsche's book Beyond Good and Evil is um, it's like totally about that and it's like things we've said for a long time right that's why it's really cool to know that other people have been saying the same things because like he said so like um, one of the reasons why I kept saying we were like street life philosophers is because we'd, we'd always talk about what we thought life was about we'd yeah. go on walks yeah, or like yeah, we'd yeah. hang outside play basketball and be, talk about life right mm-hmm. and then like what he was saying in his book is that like everyone's a philosopher because like a full like philosophy is just your opinion yeah. it's like a manuscript or something you mm-hmm. know what I mean and like not a man- yeah it's like a manuscript it's just like what do you think about life right and then in that we give these crazy titles of like philosopher and like mm-hmm. you govern our laws because you are a thinker but it's like, no, just nobody spends that much time thinking about it. Yeah. And if you think about it, you'll come to the conclusion that good and evil are just, um, like, boxes. Mm-hmm. And to free right. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because he, he talks a lot about, like, um, the new philosopher uh, and the, what was it, the, the free man. You know, the free man, like, he, he kind of mocks the free man in the beginning. Okay. Like, he... It's like it's like bad to be a free man. Yeah. And then like later on he says like all these quotes about how the free man is so good and just and all that stuff. But it's like if you read the beginning you'd know that this is all mockery. Like he you have to read it in context. Because if you pull that one sentence out, then everyone's gonna be like, Oh, you must be the free man like Nietzsche <laughs> stated. But then it's like, no, but if you read the beginning, he was saying how free men are like silly because they think that like we we're gonna we're trying so hard to create laws right. uh, within nature. To be free men, we must be one with nature. But even those laws are laws, you know. Yeah. True, so it's like true, true. in or and he says like to become to truly become one with nature, you must abandon all your laws, because nature has no laws. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like we were saying, unless you're talking about physics, but physics can be broken on a different planet. Well, yeah, it's different on each. Yeah. On each planet. Yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So. Like just um, from beyond good and evil, right? from beyond good yeah and then I was reading the summary of Thus Spoke Zarathustra because like I didn't want to buy it yet because like it looked kind of weird it looked like a Jesus figure on the front cover and then I was reading the synopsis okay. it's it's a satirical play off of Jesus mm-hmm. so it's, it's like it's mocking the Bible right that's why because like it's like it's about a prophet who comes down from a mountain and I was like that sounds very like 
like dogmatic. Why would he write that? <laughs> and then reading the description, it's like, no, he wrote that because it's a satire on the Bible. Right, right, right. So all of his philosophies are presented. Oh, that's funny. Cause yeah, it, right. I don't know. It reminds me of someone from like Speaker's Corner, mm -hmm. and he's doing the same kind of thing. That's why. Yeah, exactly. That's the exactly. guy I was telling you about. Okay. Yeah. Tan guy or something like he's not there. He can't go back to the UK. Mm -hmm. But like he made like a fake religion or something. It, but it was more of a mockery. Right. Right. Set right, up right, a mockery right. and then he did exactly. Yeah, he did exactly that. So like, so nobody generally nobody really likes Nietzsche, but right. Like, he's like he's okay. like a Joe Rogan to me or a Banksy. Nietzsche is like mm -hmm. on that level because it's like, although I didn't I disagreed with his like women views, you know. Right. Because he was, like, very, like, negative towards women. But then, like, it's, like, the time itself, like, I disagree with it. It's, like, it's like backwards thinking now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because if, if he really talks about, like, nature and freedom, then why did you just place women in a box? Mm -hmm. We're talking about not being a box. That's why I didn't disagree. That's why I disagreed with it. It's, like, you're giving your opinion on something you just said that we shouldn't have opinions on. Right. Right. Because like you say, like, oh, women need to be educated and all that stuff. They should be in the kitchen, but they don't know how to, like, cook. Stuff like that. I was like, oh, what? It was, like, it was very, like, really? neg it was very negative. I was oh, like, wow. oh. But I was like, are you being satirical right now? I can't tell. Mm. You know, because, like, I'll be reading. I'll be like, oh, I get, I get the points where you're trying to make satire. Like, you're trying to mock the thing that you're speaking highly of. Right. You know, but then for that one, I was like, I don't know if you're mocking it or not. It wasn't obvious. Oh. Um, hmm. But yeah, at that time, like women's rights and stuff were like kind of lower and whatever, whatever. Yeah, um, interesting. <laughs> and then I also didn't like his nobility chapter. It's like what is noble, and then he like talks about it. Basically, he'll like present these things like what is this, and then okay. he'll he'll explain like, what is virtue, and he'll spend the whole like it's like kind of broken up into like lectures. Mm -hmm. Like he was speaking, it wasn't like he wrote the book. I don't think he wrote the book. Maybe he did, I don't know. But just the way it's like laid out, it kind of seems like somebody just recorded his talks and then wrote them in a book. But uh, so like he'll have a chapter like, what is virtue? And then he'll spend the whole time telling you that your preconceived notion of virtue is incorrect. Okay, right. right. Yeah. So that's why. And then like in the noble chapter, he's like, what is, no what is noble? But it was like so obscure, I didn't understand it. I was like, I get what you're trying to say, but it was like, you came about it in such a roundabout way, you could have said mm -hmm. it cleaner. Okay. And that's also why a lot of people like the spoke Zarathustra because it's not, a lot of people said they couldn't understand Beyond Good and Evil because he's so paradoxical, you know? But in the spoke Zarathustra, it's just like straight to the point because he's speaking like a prophet. Right. So people just found that easier to understand. Hmm. But it's like, I like the paradoxical. I, I like that it's in a code. Or, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's, yeah, it depends on what, what level you're at. Yeah. And yeah, interpretation, because then you could just pick and choose his phrase and say, he meant this. It's like, yeah. no, but you had to read the full thing and then understand in the context he didn't mm -hmm. actually mean it like that. It's like a podcast. If you if you snip out like one sentence from our thing, you won't get the full. If you snip out the wrong sentence, that's why I create, yeah. I create the, the shorts, because if somebody <laughs> else is creating the shorts, they could pull like the wrong one. It's like, right. no, that's not what I really meant to say. You have to listen to the context. Mm. But yeah, I see. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I know you liked philosophy. I did like philosophy. I did take uh, I don't know what you call it, a semester of one hundred one. Yeah, philosophy one hundred one. And these guys are all in that one. Oh, okay. So yeah. we went like in chronological order from like Socrates or pre-Socratic mm -hmm. to Socrates. Is I would say Western philosophy. Uh huh. That's what they were saying. Uh, and then all the way to. I don't know who I ended off with, but we went through like all the different ones, like Kant and okay, because uh, you said that he, he mentioned kept, he kept referencing. Uh, I thought it was Kant, but okay, he kept referencing Kant, and I was like, I was like, who is this guy? I didn't read any of his stuff. <laughs> I or don't remember. Or I'll, I'll, I'll find my I notes. I want to yeah look like through reveal. what you yeah. I I like that your your professor went in order. See, like, I'm just reading them, like, ad hoc. It's like, oh, this sounds like a cool philosopher, mm. but then they'd reference somebody else. I'm like, okay, now i got to read that guy now. <laughs> I'm like, well, you guys... Right, right, right. But yeah. if, like, I wouldn't have... So I, I read I read the Bible, then I read the Quran, and then I read Nietzsche, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. I get what you were trying to say, but if I hadn't read those pre-things, yeah. I'd have been lost in what you're trying to explain to mm. me, you know? So... Interesting, interesting. Yeah, sometimes... Like, I feel like philosophy is like you have to read something and formulate your own opinion. Actually, he says this. People who, uh, he's like, uh, what do you 
critics of philosophers yeah. are not philosophers themselves because they're spending their whole time looking at somebody else's thoughts. Why don't you create your own thought? Right. You know, and I was like, yep, that makes sense. That's funny. He was like piercing, very piercing in his, yeah. his explanations. Like he didn't, he didn't sugarcoat anything. And I was like, oh, that's like, I would, I thought those things, but I would never say them. You know? Right, right, right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, do you have any final thoughts on No, I think, uh, yeah, great philosophers. Mm. So uh, the next one is The People of the Book. Ooh, this is a philosophy-heavy um, yeah, episode. Uh, podcast episode, yeah, aside from the first Banksy one. But I guess you can technically say Banksy's fitting for this because we're talking about things that are, like, anti-culture, which Banksy, Banksy's very anti-culture. Mm. So, yeah, so The People of the Book uh, is what we will name them. But in, when, so, like, it's interesting because, like, when I was reading the Quran, I was like, where's the whole 40, 40, like 72,000 virgins? And where's the whole like, uh, holy war? I was looking for it. Cause I'm like, right. okay, like this is what you guys, this is what everyone talks about, right? Like, oh, like, you know, Muslims are evil. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I read it. I'm like, actually it's not as violent as the old Testament. And you guys are also talking about the same things. Like, um, what I find kind of weird is all three religions the ones that the the primary thing that they no there's two primary things, um, and I think the Quran laid it out very well. That's why I was like, oh, I, I actually agree most with this one. Okay. So they said um, the Jews focus too much on Moses. Yeah. The Christians focus too much on Jesus. Yeah. Muslim actually mean the literal translation of Muslim means devoted. To, just a prophet. It's just uh, it's just a human. They said it in there. They're oh. not. They're yes, they're prophets. They refer to them as prophets, but. Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, they're all just humans. And you right. cannot, yeah, 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 you yeah, cannot, yeah, yeah. You cannot they're not anything... human action towards God. God mm-hmm. supersedes human. So don't yeah, yeah, look yeah. at these people. Which is kind of ironic, because when I was looking for the 72,000 virgins, when I was looking for the holy war, you told me about the hadith. And I had no idea what this was. Because yeah. they don't talk about this in the uh, mainstream culture. They only talk about the Quran and Muslims. Right. Right? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so explain it. So it's just like the hadiths are like the way certain parts of the Quran. I'm like I'm not well versed in it. Too. No, just like your general. Yeah, it's just over it. certain rules what to follow, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, but it was done by like I think priests or things like that. And, like, and it was based off of the actions and and speakings of Muhammad. Yeah, explaining so like, them further in a way. Yeah, um, yeah. So like what what I read as the Amazon synopsis, because I was like, oh, let me just buy this and like read it too. Um, it's the hadiths yeah okay because there's some the uh, that's why the, the the clashes happen like within the group right like because i don't think some believe in certain parts of yeah. the hadith some don't so some so do. uh, good examples catholic versus christian yeah um they both use the exact same bible so but the catholic version is the full thing christian version omits some of the old testaments but the new testament's all the same for both of them so technically if i read the catholic bible i've also read the but christian it's also bible. different that they don't What's also different there is I think they don't view God as um, view wor- like worship like uh, Mary, Mary, yeah. and yeah, it's more about the. But see, nobody said anything in the Bible about that. They just said like Mary, like nobody. They didn't give their opinion on Mary. They just yeah, no. What I'm saying like the the Catholic focus on Mary as well. Like I know yeah, more yeah. as, as a di- than, divine being. Yeah, just like Jesus, a divine being. Yeah, but see, when you realize that they're just looking at Jesus as the one who escaped death. It makes sense. It's like, yeah, that's why you think he's so divine. Right. But like, but that's why I was like, I, 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 I can logically understand the Quran better because it's like, yeah. Well, yeah. We're looking maybe they were like, God, yeah, why are yeah. we looking so much at the people that are talking about God? But again, yeah, it, not it, God. it's coming. It's supposed to be better, better, right? <clears throat> Fix what like was a, in the yeah. one before. Which is which is the the thing of uh, the Quran. So the Quran is uh, the Quran literally means recitation. I had to Google that because I'm like, what does that actually? It must mean yeah. something. Yeah. So it means recitation because uh, Gabriel recited the Quran to Muhammad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so the hadiths are about Muhammad, whereas the Quran is about God's word. So. I don't know. Like, I, yeah, I I will have to look into more. Into, that that was just the, the summary. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, summary yeah. said like oh, the is hadith right? is is about Muhammad. It's like it's autobiography. It, um, it's 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 like the gospel version 
Maybe, yeah. Uh, I guess I would say, yeah. So, like, like the like, gospel is all about what Jesus did and what's his beliefs and all that. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Right. I'll, I'll have, that's what the, yeah. the gospel is about. Right, right, it's about, right. like, Jesus' life. So, like, the Hadith would be, like, mm-hmm. the gospel version of Muhammad. Well, that's our dog trying to make an entry appearance. They heard scratching earlier. That's her. She's, like, chewing on a thing. But, yeah, so, um, so where was I? Hadith. Hadith. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so but, but that kind of is a count, counterintuitive point because yeah. it just said in the Quran that you cannot, human cannot supersede God. Mm. So why are we looking to Muhammad for answers? We should be looking at God for answers. Right. So in that alone, you've already canceled out your logical argument. I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you think about it logically, it's like a... If we understood it right, yeah. Through, like, Aristotle viewpoint. Yeah. 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 But this is one of those those topics where it's very sensitive. Oh, yeah. I think religion in itself. That's why I like Speaker's Corner. You'll see the... It's there. It is... Like, there are a lot of clashes... But there's also like kind of like interesting debates. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So but people don't have time to watch all that. <laughs> that's very true. Even I can. It's like so long. I'm like, nah, pass on that. Home. <laughs> um, so any any other final thoughts on the, the people? Oh, uh, so the people of the book. Why are they the people of the book? Because they all believe in the same book. Um, because their their belief systems come from a book. Yeah. Yes, dog. Yes, you have some points. She agrees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. So um, they're known as the people of the book because they have um, their belief system comes solely from books. Okay. I'll put Interesting. You down. Which makes sense. Yeah. Like, it makes the Quran's sense. a book. The Bible's the Old Testament's a book. Yeah. New Testament's also a book. Mm. So that's where the idea came from. Um, speaking of which, brings us to our next topic: Thirteen Lost Years of Jesus. I didn't talk about this before, but this is a great book so i read this before i read the bible because it was yeah. like because you kind of grew up knowing the bible stories because i was like catholic as a kid yeah uh so then this is actually about where uh like where did jesus go mm. so what yeah. they said is he was like a very like i remember watching in, like a video of this yeah. a video yeah yeah i heard i saw I, like I a doc on it, it to before you too. yeah and when then i, I saw I the saw book it. and i was yeah. like oh, okay like yeah. let me get the book versus watching the dog. Right. But yeah, I, I saw that doc before. It was like a History Channel doc or something like that, right? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. I brought it to your house, I think. Yeah, I okay. Have. Well, maybe, yeah, yeah. So basically it's about... It's um, been a long time ago. Though. It's about this boy named Issa yeah. who uh, was born... Uh, oop. Oh, shit. All right, hold on. We got to do a little technical support here. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's about a boy named Issa. And... Yeah. Uh, so what happens is like he's like young and then he hears the story about um, a person named Gotama Buddha mm. and um, what happens is he wants to search for enlightenment okay yeah Sh- like just like the Gotama so he was slated to be married at the age of like 13 or something like that or 12 I can't remember and then um, but he escaped from home and he went towards like the um, he like followed the Silk Road yeah in order to um, in order to find these like these um, mm. these like enlightened beings yeah. and then he went to Tibet he learned all he could there they named him a Buddha okay and then they're like okay yeah, you've yeah, learned as much as you can and he's like okay I'm gonna leave now and then he visited the home of uh, Siddhartha but obviously Siddhartha was already dead by that time and then he went to he then he went to India learned the Vedas and then he came back um, to his hometown of Jerusalem okay and then he started preaching to people and then people thought he was like a god but he was really just saying like like philosophies about life like mm-hmm. axioms and then that's where the Romans crucified him if it sounds familiar it's Jesus yeah so Isa and Jesus are uh, they're saying in the book they're saying that they're the same person it's just that um we've switched their names oh okay yeah mm. so which makes sense it's just like somebody who's understanding things about life you know and all that um yeah interesting yeah so it, it's it's also weird because it's like it's like if you just look at it 
as a person on the pursuit of knowledge, like Nietzsche would say, he'd come to the same conclusions. But see, back then, they didn't have such a formalized educational system or science. Mm -hmm. So you would think it would be like, um, like divinity, right? Right. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like it's like oh, if you come up with a crazy philosophy and people are like oh, that's totally correct. Mm -hmm. It's like rather than being like oh, it, I like philosophized <laughs> about it. Yeah. It's like oh, it like came through to me from God, higher power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah. Uh, that's you gotta wonder, right? What what did happen for those missing years in that Bible? Oh uh, well, it makes sense now because it's like yeah, yeah that's what I'm his saying. name like, was just because um, I remember asking some people that before, and they're just like, uh, no, he was just at home. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that makes. <laughs> but which is also kind of weird because like in the um, like, what? in the gospels too, because they get progressively dark. They were saying like, oh, that's also in the Quran too. They're like these people are bewitched. They're sorcerers. Even even the um, Pharaoh of Egypt was like, yeah. he's like, so like Moses would go to the Pharaoh of Egypt and then. And then the pharaoh would be like, "You are you are bewitched by a demon. Huh. You you are a sorcerer trying yeah. to spit your sorcerer magic on me." And it was like that. Yeah, I can see how you would think that. Yeah. You know, at the time, because like you're the most powerful race, and then all of a sudden, like powerful culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, like these these people rise up, and they're like, "Oh my my God, will smite you." Like it's against their capitalism. Exactly, yeah. yeah like so they're it's doing like, to America. It, it's sort of like the 99% mm. yeah, 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 working. Yeah. You know, right, they've right, come right. up with something where it's like, you must let us go because of the, our divinity. Mm. And it's like, we're the chosen ones, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> not saying they're not. I'm just saying. Right, yeah, yeah, Historically, yeah. economically, it makes sense. Yeah, it kind of does, yeah. Yeah. But mm. we don't know anything about the universe for sure, so they could be. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so yes. philosophical question of the week is your philosophical question. Yeah, my real, you know, some more. This of a, is a different yeah, one. Just the question was like, see all these prophets and such mm -hmm. who had been touched by God or whatever. I'd uh, like to preface that I usually come up with a philosophical question and I talk about it. I like ask this shit. Yeah. But then he asked me this one. I was like, that's a good question. We'll save it for like, the podcast. You know, so those people had some sort of person that was you know connected to god or whatever right like uh -huh. prophets how come what that doesn't exist now like if if, if there if you messengers yeah like messengers right? how come within that time span there were so many messengers yeah and like, then uh, after speaking that through? nobody but nobody now for the past um two thousand four thousand years yeah why why wouldn't he send another person doesn't it seem like uh, you know we're clashing a little too much uh it's true so I would say it's a twofold answer. So you're asking me this question. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll say it's a twofold answer. Um, one, they probably do exist, but we just put them in mental institutions now. <laughs> there's, there's like well, right. after the pharaohs, yeah. after the pharaohs mishap, he's like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta work some mm -hmm. contingencies into this one, guys. So does that mean the ones in the past were also could have been crazy? Crazy? Yeah, maybe. Or and my second answer is that now Catholicism is the most powerful race. So why would he need to come back when his religion's in charge? No, but there's different religions, though. No, no, I know, I know. But the people of the book, so what are the most... What are the most um, but isn't it also against it, too? No, wait, so, so what are the most um, prominent religions uh, I think right now that most people believe? Yeah, I think Muslim? it's... Yeah, Muslim Jew. Christianity and Jew Judaism. Like, is Judaism really that big? What's the other? What are the other ones? Jainism too small. Like Hinduism is up there, but they don't. But they don't stir anything up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? J J Hinduism accepts everything. Well, they used Buddhism to, maybe, yeah. but also Buddhism doesn't stir anything up. They used to, yeah. Bu Buddhism. That was a long time ago. When long time ago, yeah. yeah. But they they're they're more Zen, right? But like, the people of the book religions are very conquering, right? Yeah, because it's in there. It's yeah. like you must go out and smite. Yeah, but I mean, like it's between the two, believer. right? So what do you mean between the two? The Muslims and the Christians. Yeah, but still, people of the book. So God already won. Uh, but the mm, same God. They're talking about the same God. Though. No, no, but they're all the people of the book are all. I, I understand about the same God. that. I understand that they're talking about the same God, but it's he. Why did he send three messengers then? Because he had to refine it. So 
Um, so should wouldn't does any then he has a problem with if majority are Christian? Then shouldn't they have been? No, all right, the so, one, the last so, messenger. Okay. So so check this out. Wow, I'm actually gonna break this one down. So <laughs> so so Moses came. Yes. They came, no no okay. So Noah came first before Moses. Okay. Noah came because the chosen ones were not acting right by God's vision. Okay. So God wiped them all out, most of them. And he restarted. Okay. Then the his people became enslaved by the Egyptians. Mm. So Moses came to let his people go. Okay. And then after that, Jesus came because the his chosen people became too powerful. They were like not being like correct like mm-hmm. they were being like greedy they were going against god okay it's like this is not what i taught you jesus came and he's like wait wait hold up guys we need to refine what um what has been said oh i i don't oh, wait let me just circle back because I, I was saying talking about the pro- prominent uh difference um so i talked about one but there's two so not only is the prominent difference which one they believe but the the other difference is divorce so each, th- all three of them, the primary thing that keeps coming up yeah. is what do we do about divorce? Yeah. So Moses said, if you write it down, that you must wait three period cycles before you can find another mate. Okay. It's very specific. It's very, very weird. specific, yeah. Hmm. So, okay, now circling so, back to so that. So what if you want everyone to follow? The latest one? Maybe, I guess, yeah. Because that's so what it's So it's not really working. Though. It fixes up. It's not working. So then... A few years later, Muhammad came and he's like, "All right, guys, this is not coming. Mm-hmm. This is not fixing, right? This is, we gotta we gotta go back to to God." Yeah. But then each of those four times, they were thought of as sorcerers and so, so, okay. demonic people. Mm-hmm. Like it's in the in the Quran, like uh, they talk about the trials of Moses and Jesus and Noah. Yeah. And like I don't think they talk they didn't talk about the trials of Muhammad. So, um, but. I'm assuming that they thought he was also another. Hunt. Okay. That doesn't work. <laughs> so the first time they're like, okay, yeah, Noah's coming. Oh, he messed up our system. Oh, damn. All right, Moses is coming. Oh, he messed up our system. Yeah. Jesus came. Oh man, he messed up our system. Yeah. Muhammad came. Oh, he messed up our system. Okay. Right, let's create some. Um, let's create some barriers, fellas. We need mental institutions. Uh-huh. So for when these sorcerer or demonic people are coming towards us you can see them all downtown right repent the time is near yeah, blah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like okay just throw them in a mental institution before they get too rowdy because uh-huh. we can't break our societal structure right now okay because if you look at it what is the even though like in the u.s um uh-huh. let's all right so we'll just assume that u.s is the most powerful yeah. country right they're the most superior economically mm-hmm. they're a superpower yeah yeah what does every president have to do Swear in the Bible? Yeah. People okay. of the book. Or No, whatever book. It doesn't have to be the Bible, actually. But what does the majority of them all do? Majority? Well, majority of them are Christians, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like they've, they've, they've gotten their way. Who got their way? The people of the book. Because we're swearing on their book. Okay. So why would you need to send another one? Or if you did send another one, we need a safeguard. And the people of the book knew, okay, another one's going to come. We need to make them look less credible. So they're going against God? Is that what you mean? I mean, I didn't say it. But logically speaking, <laughs> if you look at it, maybe. Right? Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. What, what's your opinion on why nobody came back? Because it doesn't exist. Oh, straight to the point. So you're saying that we, we came with, with logical reasoning and we're like, oh, like there is, like Nietzsche said, God is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. There are newer ones, though, like the Mormons. But still, it's based on the people of the book. They, they reference God. Yeah. So if they won. It's an offshoot. Whereas, is there, any, is there any Olympic religions left? No. Is there any Norse religions? Yeah, there's one that's coming back, but still weak. <laughs> <You know>? Weak. <laughs> is there any Egyptian believers? No. They just say that that was mythology. No. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, "This is a horrible thing." Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be um, one of my quotes for Young Yoda. But um, when I was a kid, I was like, "What is the difference between uh, cult and religion?" To my my teacher, yeah, because I was like, "Well, we both have sacrifices, miss, and like all that stuff." I know I talked about this in the podcast, but I came up with the answer: tax exemption. 
Mm-hmm. So when when Scientology wanted to be recognized as a religion, yeah, I think that's one of the new ones where they don't actually. It's not people of the book. They are a people of a different book. Yeah, that's true. Not the same people of the book. Mm, yeah, because they they talk about Zenu, not God. Yeah. Um, Zenu, little men. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, but yeah. but so. Uh, when you look at the documentary um, Going Clear yes was that was the one Going Clear right? uh, something like that from HBO yeah, yeah. yeah when I watched it, it scared the crap out of me but uh, basically why because it was like oh man people can be easily controlled oh. but then they got their religion status because they, they they put lawsuits against the government did they get it yeah they got it they, they put oh. so many lawsuits against like every single so that's what they did so oh, okay it's pretty ingenious, actually. So they I needed. I thought they didn't get it. No, they they need because they owed so much money. They needed. Oh yeah, like, they did get it at the end of that at the end of that movie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they that. they owed so much money that they needed a way to cancel the tax that they owed. So they said, "No, we're a religion." And the American oh, government's yeah. like, "No, you're not." <laughs> and then um, th- so many people sued them that a lot of people go to that religion just to be like actors now. Oh or, really? Yeah, yeah be a yeah, play ball. Yeah, it's a way to get connected. Which is interesting because, like, if you look at what the America was founded on, I know we're not Americans, we're Canadians, but um, what America was founded on was was not based on God. It was, it was a secular yeah. country. Yep. And yet now we all swear on the people of the book. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't so have to, but you know, I'm waiting for when someone doesn't do that. And then there's also safeguards in the other in the Bible as well, where they're like false prophets should be like, like Jesus said it. He's like, don't listen to false prophets. You can know who they are through their deeds. Okay. And it's like, so there's another safeguard. You know, it's like in case somebody else comes back, it's kind of like me messing up the system. Oh, he's a false prophet. It's not until like 300 years later that they're like, oh, he was actually correct. But how will you know that? Because now we have YouTube videos. Yeah. We have podcasts. We can reference things. It's like, where'd you get that? That's Did true. you get that information? Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. That's why I think, that's why I was saying, like, last week, like, internet's the age of enlightenment, but then we came to the conclusion that you get into pockets. Yeah. It's which is true. It's like, you never It's not really, like, yeah, it, it is, I like, I don't know what the percentage is really, right? Like, how much are people are now more educated now because of the internet? No, uh, what they're then, saying is we're turning from a knowledge-based society to a, like a creation-based society. Okay. It's something like that. It's like a outcome-based society because like knowledge is free. Like you just if you don't know anything, just Google it. But yeah, it's like, no, well, how do you how do you yeah, use yeah, that yeah, knowledge yeah, now? Because yeah. remember when we were kids, it was all about memorization. Mm. You got to memorize this fact, this fact, this fact. Although there's still memorization of facts, but you can reference things now. Mm. But as a kid, it was like you could never reference things. Okay. Like they're even doing away with. I think they're doing away with like math without calculators. Like you, you can. You don't need to do math without a calculator now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's new. I mean, and then a solar, and then a solar flare happens, and then it wipes out all of our electronics, and then we're screwed. Yeah, send us back to the. Uh... And then everyone will die because we don't know mathematics, simple trigonometry to build a house. Yeah. Yeah. And then. We have to restart again. Yeah, and then we'll have the yeah. seven sages. Yeah, and we'll all over again. All over again, and uh, it'll, con- it'll be a cycle. That's true. All right. So next week is probably going to be the last podcast before I leave on my trip to Asia. Right. Follow C Spook at C dot Spook on Instagram if you want to see what the travels are. Um, I don't know if it, I might watch six. All right, so uh, stay tuned. Yep. Final thoughts. Uh, you know, question things. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and I will counter that with don't question anything. Okay. Like Banksy said, we should just blindly follow. Yeah, blindly follow and just buy things. Yep. Feels good. Yes. All right. Till next time. Take it easy. Support us on Patreon. Bye. Yeah.